Hello there everybody, nice to see you. So today we're going to talk about the disappearance of Corrie McKeague. I'd like to thank Jay Bells for the idea for this video and also encourage everybody to subscribe and like the video uh, to let me know if you like it and I'll do more that are similar. Now I had already made this video um, and lost everything through a glitch so I was not best pleased. Excuse this pathetic little ponytail I have in at the moment but it's very warm and I don't want my hair on my face and it's growing in and it's at that stage now where it's going to be like do I want to grow it? Do I really want to grow it or do I just want to rip it all out or cut it with a buzz clipper or what? So I'll let you know. Obviously you'll find out what decision I make. <laughs> so we're going to talk about Corrie today. So Corrie is or was, we don't know, a Royal Air Force gunner and he went missing in 2016, in September 24th of 2016 um, and there he is there, okay, um, he went missing then and he was on a night out with his friends, he went to a nightclub with his friends and he got separated from them um he was in flex nightclub in on st andrew street south and he went missing um and he got separated there are some parts of the night where he's caught on cctv we know where he was he was seen but then after he gets to an area called the mushroom where there are rubbish bins and cars parked and there are several entrances to buildings in that area and also three ways to leave the area so Corey went in Corey went in through one and there's other there's two other areas, but I'll show you what I mean in a bit. Um so anyway, the theory is by the police is that Corey somehow got into one of these industrial rubbish bins, like a biffa bin. Anybody from the UK will know what I'm talking about, but I will show you guys who don't know. And was taken to recycling or a landfill. And Obviously, the the did quite a while later search the landfill, uh, but there's a possibility also that Corey could have been crushed, which made him would have made him difficult to find. Um, so it's it's really quite a sad case indeed because his his dad is, you know, pleased at the search of the landfill, uh, but was very disappointed that Corey wasn't found, and his mom Nicola is still looking for clues about what happened to Corey uh, up until the present day. So my heart goes out to them. I can't imagine what it must be like to not know what actually happened to your boy. If he's still alive, if he's not, there's no closure because you've got nobody to bury. Um, it, it's a very sad situation and I do hope that you ultimately get the answers that you need. So, So a similar incident that happened to Corrie did happen in Sunderland, England. So this young guy called Jay McLaren was out for a night out. Uh, there's Jay there and he was in Sunderland and he left a nightclub at half past four in the morning and somehow got himself into a, a, a big industrial bin and ended up being taken to recycling. Um, he was traced by his mobile phone so it does show a lot tragic these things can happen um i know that there is a waste refuse company called what's it called viola violia and they have a video um about not sleeping in bins overnight i'm gonna see if i can find that for you guys now really are you okay yeah, well, this making this video previously, I thought it was best if I just uh, basically sat and had a chat with you about the case and, you know, showed you everything. Uh, so the campaign was called Sleep Safe. So I'm going to show you that video now. You know it's dangerous when you're freezing cold and you're wet. You take a risk because you're scared and you don't know where else to go. I don't blame him for not seeing me. It wasn't his fault. 
you know, but he blames himself every single day. Like he was supposed to know, I was asleep under all that rubbish. Every year, hundreds of people like me sleep in bins. It's the only shelter we can find to protect us from the wind and the cold. Some are lucky. They get woken when they hear the bin men arrive. Others are only discovered when they tipped into the back of the truck and are badly injured. Sometimes worse. It's too late for me. But don't let my life go to waste. Just think safe. So that is really a sleep safe campaign. Um, encouraging people who are on the streets not to sleep in waste bins because there have been tragedies and serious injuries due to that. Okay. There's a window. Okay, so it can happen, although tragic. So we, we know that this is the case. However, because there's been no trace of Corey found, it's really difficult. Corey's mobile was identified as travelling faster than walking speed on a similar route at the same time as the refuse disposal van would have been travelling on the same route. So, and the where they lost contact with Corey's mobile uh, was somewhere called Barton Mills. So, the distance from Barton Mills uh, to where Corrie was is 20 minutes by car so it would have been a 20 minute journey to there so and but in fairness to people who may think that Corrie is still alive just because he was traveling by car on the same route it does not mean that he was in the truck it's likely that he was but it doesn't mean that he was. We don't know for sure because we never found him. Okay. So what we're gonna do is go through, Corey's described as, go through his description. So Corey's described as white. He's five foot, 10 inches tall with light brown hair, short at the sides and longer on top. And when he went missing, he was wearing a distinctive pink Ralph Lauren shirt. Um, and he was wearing white trousers and Timberland boots. So that's what he was wearing when he went missing. Just in case it jogs anybody's memory. Let me have a look at what we've got here. So with that in mind, I'm just going to close that. Sorry about the gaps, it's in the presentation. I realise I'm not editing this, so I'm just going to, I'm just being me. No flashy lights are out. So this is Corrie. Let's just take me out of the way and look at that bonny face. He does have a bonny face. He's a good looking lad. Um, and so this is this is Corrie before he went missing. And as he's walked through the town, we can see here, thanks to his the lovely website set up by his family, uh, where there are gaps in the cameras. So Corrie was last seen on camera here. And I'm going to show you that uh, later. And this is the horseshoe area and this is your bins. Okay. So he was last seen on camera coming around this corner. But as you can see in this horseshoe area, there are other ways to exit. But there is a camera here. And there is a camera here. And there is also a camera there. And obviously this camera is here because these were the ones who saw that saw him walking down here. So if he'd left, in theory, he would have been seen. So I'm unaware of any motor vehicles in the area, um, but that's pretty much the argument that he didn't leave this area here until he was in the refuse truck. Um, so that's so that's the camera coverage. So let's have a look at the timeline of where Corey was and what happened. So he was at Flex nightclub. Let's see if I can find. I'm sure I've got a picture of that somewhere. Have we got Flex? Yes, we do. Okay. So, this is Flex nightclub. Okay. So, that's where Corey was with his friends. And they got separated. Um, and he was basically headed off on St. Andrew Street South. 
Um, he got takeaway food from his regular place, which I believe is, let's have a look, this place here, which is where he normally got his food, which is Pizza Mamma Mia. He was in a really good mood at the time and he was seen playing <laughs> rock, paper, scissors <laughs> with another customer. So he was, he was obviously all right. There was nothing really troubling him. Um, he was just being a young lad after a night out, getting some scran of food, as they call it in the normal world, and heading off home. So it's about this point um, that Corey heads past the grapes. So I'm going to show you that clip now. As you can see, that's this is the grapes pub on the corner. And this is Curry with his food from the, the, the takeaway. And he just walks down this road here. He's a bit unsteady. Obviously, he's had a few drinks. And then walks down here. I hope that was just his sachet that he dropped. <laughs> um bless him and then he goes down the down the road and he, he turns off around that corner so that's that okay so he went he went down there and then what he does is he goes and has a kip in the doorway of this store for a little while in the Hughes store so he sleeps there for a couple of hours um so obviously he's tired and he's having a sleep or he's just full of drink and having a sleep I don't know how many of you have been on a night out with uh, your mates and have ended up sleeping somewhere. It does happen. It does happen. Um, I've had many a night out at the Mayfair where I've fallen asleep on a gravestone of all places. Like, <laughs> so maybe it's just the weird people. I don't know. But, you know, um, he, so he had himself a bit of a nap in that doorway. And then where he went was around down around the corner and this was the last time he was seen so he goes down there and i'm going to show you this last clip of cory here he just comes down here and then he decides he's going to go that way you can see him check behind him he's looking around and then go on there. I don't know if he was going to go to the loo or anything like that. But he seems to be checking that nobody's watching him. So that was the last time he was seen. And where he went was into this area here. Which is the horseshoe. So this is just me playing about on Google Maps. But I will pause it when I come back around. That's, I'm showing the exits on the ways out of the horseshoe. And that's the actual horseshoe itself. Oh, just pause it there. So these are the wheelie bins that you saw on the little diagram that I showed you earlier. Obviously, we can see there's some car park there. I wouldn't like to be that car owner because obviously they're blocked in. Um, and that's the road. That's the way down. So, and so this is this is where he was sort of last seen or he was last known to go to. So the theory is he went into one of these bins and was taken away and something obviously that was the end of him in one way or another so that is sort of the the timeline before Corey was missing um so it was on the 24th of september he went missing the night of the 24th of september and on the 25th there was no information about Corey's whereabouts during that time um it on let's have a look around 4 30 a.m the morning that morning police were able to trace Corey's mobile phone like i said um to a truck that was to well to something that was going faster than walking speed um his phone was not used after that um, and it was not found. His phone has never been found. It wasn't found in any of the refuse trucks. It wasn't found um, in the, the landfill. No, it's never been seen. Um, on the September the 26th, 2016, Corey was reported missing in the afternoon and he didn't turn, because he didn't turn up for duty at the RAF, at RAF Huntington, where he was supposed to be. 
and at 4 10 a.m on tuesday september 27th the police make their first media appeal for information um, and they've released his image to the public so with that in mind what do you think happened to Corey? do a bit of digging yourself if you go and visit the facebook pages um etc and have a look i will put these up on screen but if you can identify uh, anything about Corey's disappearance or you know anything about his whereabouts please contact the MIT team on 01473 or call Suffolk Police on 101. Um, there is a website it is www.findcorrie.co.uk and the Facebook group is Find Corey. So if you just put find Cory in your Facebook search, and that will um, send you there. So please do have a look and see if, if you know anything, come forward, please. Um, his mum and his dad still don't know what happened to him. And I know that his mother is still looking for our son. With that in mind, when we don't know how that feels, um, you know, I would quite like to say, let's let's see what we can do to help. And if there's anything we can do to help um i am leaning towards the idea that perhaps something happened and he fell in there or he decided what you know whatever but because these things do happen however because we don't have enough evidence we can't say for sure so let me know what you think happened to Corey down below in the comments i'm happy to start a conversation about it let me know um, if you've come across any other theories or if you have any further information to share I'd be most grateful if anybody would like to come on and talk about the case please email me at thecasbat at gmail.com and you can come on the show and we shall talk about it because I think the more people who talk about the case the more that we keep it in the public eye the more chance we have of getting further information all right so thank you for joining me um, and I'm sorry this wasn't out sooner, but I'm really grateful that you've joined me and I love you all and be as safe as you can be and remember that life is too short to be taken seriously all the time. Bye bye.